So much media, so little time. Who keeps track of it all? That would be me. This is Bob Andelman, and this is the Mr. Media Interview, sponsored by 1-800-DIAL-DJs.com and recorded live on blogtalkradio.com from the new media and home shopping network, capital of the world, St. Petersburg, Florida. As a co-star of the Disney XD Channel's Aaron Stone series, Tanya Gennady has a dual life. She's the girl next door to Charlie Landers, a.k.a. Aaron Stone, played by Kelly Blatz, and she's also a player in the online game that drives the show's plot. And while this might be child's play to some, Tanya is older than she may look. Much to my surprise, despite playing a teen on the show, this native of Bandung, Indo- Indonesia, and I'll probably get corrected on that, is actually 26. Now, Tanya might be a familiar face to fans of everything from Even Stevens to public, I'm sorry, Boston Public, but she's also had a role on an episode of one of my favorite comedies, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, on the FX channel. Tanya, welcome to Mr. Media. Hey, thank you, Bob. You have such a good voice, by the way. <laughs> it's too bad I, uh, I messed it up on uh, the place where you come from. How is it pronounced properly? No, you pronounce it well, Bandung. You know, maybe I pronounce it wrong. Really? No. You make it oh, sound okay, better. Great. You make it sound like it's a really wonderful... Uh, well, it is a wonderful place, <laughs> but you make it sound really nice. <laughs> well, and you know, it's always those things that you think about ahead of time, and you think, okay, get this right, don't screw this up, and then, of course, you trip on your own tongue when you get to it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm so glad well, you like um, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. That must have been, that must have been some, some, uh, some experience, I'm thinking. I had such a wonderful time. Like, you know, because when you uh when I arrived to the uh set, uh one of the uh makeup lady told me that, you know, you uh you have to do it like line by line, you know, word by word and all these things. So, um and I didn't know that. I thought the the style was um more improvised. So, I was like getting nervous and once um we did my our first rehearsal and everybody was started you know, was was like improvising, and I was the only person who was following it, like you know, word by word by word, and um, and then finally I asked uh, uh, the guy who played Charlie, and I said, uh, is it okay if I improvise too, like you guys? He's like, of course, do whatever you want, and so I started <laughs> doing it, and we just had a blast. I mean, it was so oh. much fun. Now tell me about that episode because uh, you know from. From looking it up, all I know is the character that you played. I don't know the name of the episode. I don't know what the plot was. Right. Uh, the, uh, let me see. The title was The Gang Solves the North Korea Situation, although the gang <laughs> doesn't quite understand, like, which side of the Koreans are the bad ones. So they keep, like, talking <laughs> about, you know, the South, the North. Which one is the bad one? We're like, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> And, and uh, so where did, where did you fit in there? I'm guessing that you were, oh. uh, although you're not North Korean, you were probably playing North Korean? You're right. Or Korean, uh, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm playing one of those Koreans, um, either North or South. <laughs> and um, <laughs> um, I guess I, I was supposed to, uh, I played like like uh, one of the girls uh, working at the bar, um, I, like the, the competition mm-hmm. of Charlie's, you know, bar. And right. they were having this karaoke contest and stuff, and they're trying to uh, come in and check out um, my bar. And they realized that uh, my dad, who was played by a girl, was treating me like a slave. So Charlie and the gang <laughs> wanted to uh, save me, and they told me that if I go to their bar, I can get like free beer and smoke all I want and all these things. <laughs> So I ended up running away from the bar, and I followed Charlie home, and we uh, ended up kind of like, you know, have a little romance and stuff, but without the kissing and all those things. And then at the end, we found out that I was only 12. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. (laughs) It's cute. And, you know, I get to, I, I never smoke in my life, and so, but my character, I have to smoke a lot. And um, for the two days before filming, I went to the uh, pavilions, and I'm like, well, do you guys have any light cigarettes so I can, you know, practice smoking? And they said, yeah, you know, you should get this uh, Marlboro Light. And I'm like, oh, okay. So I started smoking for two days, and I got so dizzy. Um, By the time I got to the set, I was like, oh, a little dizzy. 
And then I found out from the director that I could have just uh, asked for like an herbal cigarette so I wouldn't be dizzy. <laughs> but of course, I found out too late. <laughs> What uh, did, what was the strangest thing that you had to do in that episode? The strangest thing? Uh, let's see. Well, I had to pick up a lot of Is that the show full of facts. strange? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun. I like that I get to be uh, someone who, uh, you know, smokes a lot and drink, drink a lot of beers. So, you know, <laughs> get drunk and making fun of people. Um, it was fun. And I get to see uh, Dennis, you know, take off his shirt. And it was kind of weird, <laughs> so we were all laughing, you know, during the improvisation, and he got hurt. <laughs> I was like, okay, that was like part of the scene. Please don't be hurt. <laughs> oh, my. Now, I, now I wanna go and, I'm going to go and look up that episode because now I, I've got to go back and see it. And I know I've seen it before, and it sounds really familiar, so I want to go back and see that. I just, uh, uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, did you ever see the movie Animal House? No, oh my gosh! I heard about it, it though. It's it, really good. It's. Uh, it, I was just thinking about it when you said that you played uh, twelve years old on 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 Philadelphia. The, the, the one of the uh, one of the plots uh, to Animal House is this girl who's always uh, uh, interested in one of the fraternity boys, mm-hmm. and at the very end, they they finally wind up together in a sleeping bag, I think, Uh-oh. on the middle of a football field late at night. And uh, she says, I've got something to tell you. And he says, what? He's, she says, I don't know if she says I'm 12 or I'm 13. <laughs> it's just like, oh, my God. Um, how, how, do you, uh, how do you explain uh, casting directors putting you in so many different age ranges? And have you ever played your actual age? No, actually, uh, fortunately, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it's fortunate. <laughs> I never played more than 22. Um, which is nice, and I thought the twelve was pushing it. And when I when I first got the um, audition, I called my agent. I'm like, "Are you sure?" Because I'm like really far from twelve. And he's like, <laughs> "Yeah, the casting asked you to come." So I did my best, you know, um, buying like a outfit to make me look younger, and you know, doing all kinds of things with the hair and the makeup. <laughs> And um, I was very happy that they hired me. I was like, awesome. <laughs> wow. Now, uh, how old is your character on Aaron Stone? Uh, I'm going to, I think, six, 16 in season one, and then, you know, a year later we became 17. Okay. See, I can, do, I can do some math here, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and how, how, how did you get the role on, on Aaron Stone? How did that come about? Aaron Stone, it was really nice, actually, because I, I saw it on the breakdown, and they were looking for, I think, something like, you know, 16-year-old, cheer, um, no, it says all-American girl, um, tomboy, and, you know, a girl next door, and yet uh, someone who can be, you know, good at computers and stuff. So when I first looked at it, um, I was thinking, oh, maybe that's not me, and my agent and my manager uh, didn't submit me for it for like a week or two, and then it came out again on the breakdown, so I said, you know what, I think I want to go out for this, and they (laughs) submitted me, um, and I waited for another two weeks, and I didn't get any call, so I said, can you just send me out one more time, (laughs) and they did, and so I got called, I think I was like the last four people to audition for it. Uh, because they audition uh, all over the cities, like Chicago, New York, and people are sending tapes um, all over the place. And I was lucky to make it. To, to make it. And in that audition, um, the casting director liked me, so I got a call back, and then I got another call back with the uh, Disney office, with the Disney exec, execs. Um, and then I got a screen test with Kelly Blatz, and four hours mm-hmm. later they called and they said, uh, you booked it, and would you like to come wow. to Toronto? I was like, sure. I don't even know where Toronto <laughs> was. I was like, yeah, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> wow. That must have been an exciting day. <laughs> that was nice because technically um, once you screen test it, uh, they have about, I believe, uh, two, three weeks to decide. So it was nice mm-hmm. that I didn't have to wait that long, you know. 
Well, it, it's interesting to me, and I was going to ask you about this anyway, but now I'm, I'm even more curious that this this role was for, you know, an, an American, I guess an American-looking, probably, you know, kind of Anglo-looking uh, girl. And I was going to ask you, um, about two weeks ago, I spoke to uh, Bai Ling, the Chinese actress. Oh, I love and, her. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. And then? <laughs> she was, yeah, she was, and she was great. And But it was interesting. She said that her last two roles um, – uh, a Beautiful Loaf, which opened last week, and then uh, one called Love Ranch, which is a couple weeks away. They were both written for uh, white American women, busty, wh- busty white American women, and she actually replaced uh, Denise Richards in A Beautiful Life, and she said they didn't, in both films, they didn't make any changes to accommodate the fact that she was not uh, the character as written, and I, I was kind of curious, you know, it's, uh, it must say a lot for you as an actress, I think. Oh, wow. Um, it's so cool. that. Sorry, I'm, I'm like starstruck. You're like talking and I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, I love her. Oh, my gosh. Well, you know, uh, I have to say, for uh, in Aaron Stone, they have changed the roles um, several times on the breakdown. I remember the very hmm. first time it did say all American, all American girl and all that stuff. And then I think uh, towards the end, they opened it up for every, everyone, it's, uh, for all ethnicities. So when I came into the audition, I would say there were like about maybe 30 people and uh, majority, um, um, you know, white and, uh, you know, there are some Hispanic and blacks and um, and myself and some Asians. Hmm. And um, I think Disney is very, you know, equal opportunity and they open the roles uh, a lot of times to all ethnicities at the end, uh, which mm-hmm. is nice. But... But also, I have a lot of friends who are Americans, and they booked um, roles that are made for Asian people. So I think it's whatever you bring to the character at the audition, and um, the ethnicities, they can change change them easily. That's what um, I think. Well, and, and who's to say these days what all-American girl is or would look like? I mean, You know, it's 20, essentially, it must be at least 20, 25 years ago, Margaret Cho did a TV show that wasn't, excuse me, it wasn't on very long, but it was called All American Girl. So, you know, I I think, uh, you know, when I was in high school, which is a long time ago, 35 years ago at least. Yeah, right, um, five years ago. You know, no, it was, it was, it was actually 35 years ago. Um, um, Yeah, if you had asked me then, I think I would have said, well, All American Girl, sure, it's a, it's a white, you know, uh, a white yeah. girl with blonde hair and blue eyes. Today, I, I wouldn't even begin to think I, I could describe what uh, an all-American girl is. So, you know, why not you answering that that description? Hey, you know, I like that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I usually, yeah. um, you know, actors, right? Um, I mean, I don't know about other actors. At least for me, whenever I see something in the breakdown, you know, I always feel like, oh, I, I can do that. Oh, how about that one? <laughs> and then my manager <laughs> would be like, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, hey, gotta try. You know, I like trying, giving giving it a shot. Now, on on Aaron Stone, just last question about age. But um, are are the other uh, actors who are playing teens? Are they, you know, are they younger than you, or are they in your age range? So- uh, let's see. I think it, I'm sure it's okay for me to say this because they can check on IMDb, right? Um, uh-huh. The uh, guy who plays Aaron Stone, I think he's 22. Mm, okay. And the the youngest one uh, is David, uh, the guy who played uh, Jason. He he is actually uh, when we first started, he was fourteen, and now he's sixteen. Okay. So. Um, well, I I spoke to um, a young lady named uh, Haley McFarland a couple of days ago. She's on uh, Lie to Me. Oh. She plays uh, Tim Roth's uh, daughter. Yes, and, and he was uh, also on uh, United States of Terra, right? Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. She played like the. Thing. The friend of uh, Tara's daughter on that show, right? And a daughter's uh, Tara's son, Tara's son, and uh, you know, I just assumed I didn't look it up, uh, but looking at her, I assumed she was about thirteen or fourteen, and then we talked, and she's eighteen, and I was just—you could have just knocked me over with a feather. I was no quite way. surprised. She yeah. does look but thirteen. It, it, I know. <laughs> <laughs> It makes sense. If I, I mean, if I'm a if I'm a, a casting director or just a director, I, I would think if I can find someone who is 18 or older and can play, you know, five or six years younger, I want that person rather than the 13 or 14 or 12 year old because 
you know, there's a maturity and you're going to say the lines with a little more understanding and, you know, you're going to pull it off. Whereas somebody who's 12, 13, 14, they're immature no matter how much you try. And, you know, it, it's just not going to, you're just not going to get the same performance, I wouldn't think. Also, though, um, they, uh, if, if you're over 18, uh, you can work more than eight hours. Uh, right. Uh, excellent, right. Excellent point. <laughs> <laughs> excellent point. Although I have to say, though, Miley Cyrus, I mean, she started at, you know, uh, at early age, and I thought she, she's awesome, her acting, and also Selena Gomez. Um, mm-hmm. I'm actually a big fan of both of them, and I stole their acting skills a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I love that. I know. I, I, I just, I, I'm like, I'm, I love those, uh, you know, the Disney kids a lot. Oh, the things we learn on this show. The, yes. So I, I get, I get really <laughs> excited when I, because nowadays, you know, uh, Disney has been so kind uh, to me, and I get invited to, you know, Selena's party or uh, to check out Miley's or uh, Mitchell Musso. So it's very hard for me to contain my um, excitement because when I see them, I want it to like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. <laughs> but I have to act <laughs> cool. <laughs> I, uh, I understand. Now, do you, uh, you mentioned Disney. Do you feel much pressure to uh, watch yourself in Hollywood or Toronto, as the case may be, where, you, where you're shooting, because you work for Disney and appear on a Disney channel? Uh, not in Toronto because Aaron Stone actually uh, – even though we've we've filmed it for since the pilot, it's already more than two years. Uh, it just oh. it it's I think it's gonna air in two days in Toronto. It hasn't even aired uh, the first episode. So when when we were working there, nobody knows us from Aaron Stone. Hmm. But but I mean, in terms of uh, you know, now that you're on a Disney related, uh, you're a Disney Channel show. Do you have to just think about what you do in public and oh, how you behave, no matter where you are? That's what you meant. Uh, yeah. You know, I I never put much thought to that. I guess I'm just being myself, but I'm not a party person, I guess, so I don't have to be careful. <laughs> I'm mm. kind of boring, actually. <laughs> I stay home a lot, read books, and play with my cats. Kind of boring, yeah. Maybe I should come up with a better better answer. <laughs> I, I suspect you make Disney very happy. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm very thankful for Disney for, you know, um, giving me the opportunity, even though uh, I'm not like 15 or 16. And um, mm. I, I think they know. Well, I know uh, I spoke to some of the uh, the actors and actresses who are on uh, uh, The Secret Life of the American Teenager and uh, Make It or Break It, which are on ABC Family. Mm. And, and they all said, it was interesting. They said that they're very conscious of being on a Disney show uh, when they're, you know, when they're out and about. But they also said that they've been working so much and so hard, they haven't had much chance to screw up because they're always working. <laughs> I hear you. you maybe know, that's a good thing. Maybe that's a good thing. I mean, I love working. I actually, all most of my friends, especially while I was in Toronto, because I was there by myself. Um, I would say most of my friends are the crew and the cast, and we just hang out on set. And after, you know, when we go home, all we can do is just sleep and um, study the lines and go to work again the next day. So being on the set is like the most fun because you hang out, and at lunch you can, you know, play some, you know, basketball or run around and things like that. So you, I actually look forward to go to work. And now that I'm back for 10 days already, I really miss them. I miss fighting and having lots of weapons, you know, because I always have lots of the, you know, because of my character, I right. I have my own room where I have, like, more than 20 different kinds of guns and gadgets, and I always play there, you know, uh, during break time and, you know, examine each weapon because they make it really real, and it's, I don't know, I'm kind of like, you know, geeking out there. <laughs> I imagine you're you're trained pretty carefully in the use of all these. Yes, and and don't be afraid. They're all made from plastic. They just look real, uh, and um, but they're all uh, safe. Uh, and we uh, we have we have lots of um, you know in the case of the uh, fighting we have lots of people in the stunt team, and uh, there are always people who are watching you and making sure that you know no one is going to hurt each other. 
Uh, I was going to say, uh, you work, you, you, you shoot in Toronto. Toronto, uh, having just been there twice the last couple of years, uh, has an incredible uh, multicultural uh, uh, aspect to that city, more so than uh, most places in North America, I think. Uh, you know, do you have, the, have you had the opportunity to get out and, and see the city and people, or really locked up pretty much most of the time you're there? Yeah, actually, uh, my first season, I, I, I would say the second season, I have double or triple the amount of scenes than the first season. So mm. during the first season, I have like three, three out of eight days, uh, you know, free. So those times, um, I would go to, you know, Niagara Falls, and I take a lot of tours uh, by myself. I think people mm-hmm. are like, thinking maybe I'm weird because, you know, I don't know anyone else and everyone is at work. So um, I just, like, sign up for tours and I would go to uh, um, the zoo and uh, water boat tour and sailing tour and all kinds of stuff. I I, I like that, actually. I've never really traveled by myself or, like, hang out by myself like that. So being in Toronto, it was my first time uh, doing those Mm. things. But uh, I met lots of makes, makes, Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, please, Mike. go ahead. Oh, I was going to say I met a lot of interesting people. Um, you know, some of them want to hang out again, and uh, but I try not to tell them what I do because then sometimes they get really excited and they want to come to set, and sometimes I can't bring too many people to set. You know. Mm. <laughs> Darn! I was just going to ask you if you could bring me on. Set. No, I'm just kidding. You can come. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But uh, the, the, and Toronto has a magnificent zoo. If anyone's listening is interested in those things, um, it's a tremendous uh, zoo up there. Um, now, do I understand correctly that you worked on this year's uh, Star Trek film, but uh, were ultimately uh, cut from it? Yeah. I w- yes, that's right. Um, but I will say though, working on Star Trek with J.J. Abrams is like. Oh my God! It was so amazing um, because my part. There were like six um, aliens who are, you know, um, who has like major, major alien makeup. Like mine, mm-hmm. for example, it takes about five hours in the morning to put it on, and to take it out takes three hours. And oh. we did like about eleven days of fitting uh, to make it work because my alien. It's actually really beautiful, like, you know, my ears would move as I walk, and I have, like, a really long tail, really cute, um, and I and I truly enjoy working with him. He He's so nice and always uh, caring, you know, always ask me every, like, 10 minutes, can you breathe? Are you okay? Do you need some air? <laughs> because I, I can't breathe through my nose. Uh, I need to get um, straws. So he's like, do you want straws? Do you need to breathe? <laughs> and uh, after every take, you know, he always um, asks. Um, but, yeah, unfortunately, I didn't make it to the uh, final cut, but still, I thought it was cool. Well, now, if, 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 you had, if you had made it, uh, where would, what part of the movie would we have seen you in? I, um, well, I have three scenes, and um, one of them was uh, with Captain Kirk, and I'm basically, what happened that day? We were shooting at the uh, Budweiser place, and something happened, and I guess we just couldn't couldn't make it happen. Um, but it was in the scene where his hand got swollen, and then he had the realization. So that's uh, oh, one yeah. of the scenes. It was good, though. Don't you think that was such a good... It, I mean, it was such a big oh. production. I, I, I was there... Absolutely. Um, I was there for, uh, you know, well, I was there watching other people doing it, like, you know, when they were doing the uh, major green screen, and it was just amazing. I, I was so happy to be part of it. And I, I, I would imagine that any woman who knows that you uh, uh, worked in a scene with uh, Chris Pine wants to know, is he, uh, you know, How is he everything he, is? he seems to be? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yes, there you go. <laughs> He is, yeah, he, he is so, he's so cute, and oh, oh my gosh, even though when his hand was swollen, I was like, oh my gosh, he's hot. <laughs> and I couldn't really, I couldn't talk much because um, I, I have to control my breathing because it's really cold, and um, and my entire face is covered 
Um, so when I speak, I can't get too excited because then uh, my breathing would not be good. <laughs> so when I saw him, I was like, "Hi, how are you? Oh my gosh!" <laughs> and, and you know, and and he's so kind because after the scene, you know, it, it, uh, we walked outside and it was um, it was really cold. And he's like, "Oh, do you need a jacket? Um, are you okay?" And I was like, "No, I just need a hug." <laughs> <laughs> and, and I, I, I assume that he delivered. He delivered. <laughs> He's and like, okay, weird to... alien. <laughs> well, well, but I don't know I if he knows you. I'm a girl or a guy because you know I'm all covered, so he probably doesn't know. Although he should know because I was wearing a skirt. I was an alien with a skirt. <laughs> Did he ever see just how pretty you are without the makeup? Sure. <laughs> Oh, he did. Okay. No, 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 no. He actually oh, he, never. No. I thought you were kidding. No, no, I was serious. Oh no, we never get out. Um, we do the makeup in a secret, you know, makeup room, and then you go outside and they cover you with, uh, you know, an um, umbrella and lots of, uh, in a how do you call it? Like, they basically cover you up so you only meet the actors on set. So nobody has ever seen. Like nobody knows who is inside the alien faces. By the time you so arrive, you, could, um, you know, you're already f- full in, in makeup. So you could meet Chris Pine on the street tomorrow, and he wouldn't know that you had uh, been in a scene with him and that he had given you a hug. He wouldn't know. And if I tried to convince him, I don't know if he would believe me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And I, I have to ask you, how did you find out that you had been cut? Oh my gosh! I actually went. I I went with my entire family. I was like, oh my gosh, let's watch this, you know, in the movie theater. Oh no! And then I was like, yeah, I, I'm not there, but Chris Pine is there. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, how, how tough! But it's okay, you know. Um, it. Uh, I don't think I've ever been cut out before. Uh, but I have to say, it's my. Uh, I, because I right before the filming the movie. I watched, um, I don't know, maybe like 40 episodes of Star Trek and like three or four movies. Um, oh. And I have to say that J.J. J. Abrams did a wonderful job. I mean, even people who who don't care about Star Trek, you know, love that movie. He, he, you, uh, I mean, that movie is so good. You want a shot at the sequel? Yeah, that would be awesome, right? <laughs> that would be awesome. This time I would make sure, you know, make sure, hey, uh, let's make sure the alien works here. <laughs> <laughs> wow. well, there were a um, lot of before... um, technical difficulties with my costume, but it's okay. Oh. Wow. Well, before we have to wrap it up, I'm just wondering, uh, beyond the season of uh, Aaron Stone that you're, you're shooting now, I guess, um, what uh, do you have anything booked ahead? Are you doing anything when this is over? Actually, um Right now, I'm focusing. I just finished producing my first short film, um, oh. and we are in the process of, you know, sound mixing and coloring uh, the movie, and hoping to be able to enter it to the festivals, you know, and have like a small premiere uh, for friends and casting and directing uh, directors and stuff. So that's where my focus is right now. Great. Well, when that's ready to go, you'll have to come back and talk to us about it. That would be awesome. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to have you. Um, and uh, folks, listen, you can you can catch uh, Tanya Gunati in new episodes of Aaron Stone on the Disney XD channel every Wednesday night at 8 p.m. And uh, Tanya, it was a lot of fun, and thanks so much for joining us on Mr. Media today. Bob, thank you so much for um, having me, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. My pleasure. We'll look for more of you. Hopefully we'll see you in that sequel. I hope so, too. (laughs) Thank you. All right. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. And, uh, folks, for more interviews with uh, today's young TV stars, you can surf over to our main website, www.mrmedia.com. That's where you can listen to my earlier conversations with uh, Haley McFarland and Monica Raymond of Lie to Me and many more of your favorites. And please think about writing an online review of Mr. Media, casting a vote for Mr. Media, or marking Mr. Media as one of your favorites. Whether you listen on Blog Talk Radio, BlogCritics.org, True Slant, Pointer Online, Digital Journal, Vox, Mediafly, Podfeed.net, 
Blueberry, Zencast, Zimbio, Current, or Odeo. Subscribe to Mr. Media on iTunes and you'll never miss a show. Just search Mr. Media Interviews from within iTunes and subscribe for free. Or subscribe to Mr. Media's blog on the Amazon Kindle Reader. You can also listen with a piece of string and a tin can in many locations. If you've got an idea for a guest, email me directly at bob at andelman.com. That's A-N-D-E-L-M-A-N. You can also follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, www.twitter.com slash andelman. Thanks so much for joining us today. Always appreciate you sharing a piece of your day with Mr. Media. <laughs>